What does it mean to be Melungeon? In the mountains of Virginia and other Appalachian states, mixed race people have long eked out a living while questions about their intriguing origins have persisted. Why the Melungeon's DNA is America's most controversial ancestry. Outcast, not black, not white, not accepted, just in between. Now, imagine a whole group like that, the Melungeons. Mixed ancestry, mysterious origins. Were they black? Native, Portuguese, no one really knew. They didn't fit America's boxes, so America pushed them out. But their story runs deeper than labels. This is the mystery of the Melungeons. Historical accounts often describe Melungeons as having darker complexions, dark hair, and other traits that stood out from the mostly European-descended communities around them. Some early observers even noted dental features or eye colors that they thought were more typical of indigenous or African ancestry. These kinds of descriptions fueled all sorts of myths. Stories that Melungeons might descend from Portuguese sailors, Moors, or even the lost colony of Roanoke. But modern DNA research tells a different story. Genetic tests have shown that Melungeons have an incredibly diverse background that was misinterpreted by those who relied on appearances alone. Melungeons have lived mostly in the Appalachian region, particularly where the American states of Tennessee, Virginia, and North Carolina meet. Counties like Hancock in Tennessee and Lee County in Virginia are known for having decent amounts of the Melungeon population. And because these areas in and around Appalachia are notoriously remote and hard to reach, the Melungeons have lived mostly in isolation up until now. Ultimately, and for good reason too, this separation has helped preserve their unique culture, physical features, and heritage. However, this same cautiousness has also made them targets of suspicion and prejudice from outsiders. One of the most disturbing chapters in the Melungeon's history involves one Walter Plecker, a eugenicist from Virginia. In the early 20th century, Plecker led a campaign to classify people strictly by race. He was offended by how easily people with skin that was barely fair and of a mixed heritage were passing as white or Native American. And he hoped the law would serve to clearly make that distinction. By and by, under Virginia's Racial Integrity Act of 1924, anyone with even one drop of African blood was legally considered black. At the time, racial tensions were still strong and many were discriminated against for being half-breed. Plecker also sent letters to the relevant officials instructing them to change Melungeon records, which would label them as black. Sadly, this led to lost birth records, altered family trees, and the erasure of cultural identity for many Melungeon families. However, we now know that the Melungeons were indeed of mixed heritage, thanks to advances in DNA testing. According to specific studies, it has been confirmed that the Melungeon people have European, African, and Native American ancestry so they are essentially a tri-racial grouping. Moreover, these findings supported what many Melungeon families had long said about their backgrounds. Yet, in spite of the Melungeon's mixed origins coming to light, it didn't make their social struggles disappear suddenly. And just as well, these discoveries have also reopened debates about how to define race and identity. Originally, the term Melungeon was an insult used in the early 1800s to describe about 40 families of mixed lineage living near the Tennessee-Virginia border. They were invariably being singled out as deserving of suspicion for not fitting the mold. Nevertheless, over time, many Melungeon descendants began to embrace the term. They used it to reconnect with their past and take pride in their mixed heritage. Fortunately, the rise of the internet and DNA testing made it easier for people to trace their roots, and many began to rediscover and reclaim the Melungeon name. To put things in perspective, the Melungeons are a perfect example of how America has always been obsessed with sorting people into racial boxes. Even when many Melungeons could pass as white, they were often labeled as free people of color, and they faced discrimination for that same reason. Laws like the one-drop rule proposed by Plecker, mentioned earlier, meant that even a hint of African ancestry could change a person's legal status, rights, and place in society. For Melungeons, this meant having to hide their roots or risk losing everything. Some were even sterilized or denied education based on their supposed race. Uh, 
I never heard that term other than my dad would talk about Ma Sally, as he would always say, this is my great great grandmother. And he kind of gave, gave me this story of she was an Indian. No doubt, the social pressure on the Melungeon families was real. In one 1874 case, a woman named Martha Zimmerman had her right to inherit property challenged because someone claimed she had African blood. Her lawyer argued she was descended from ancient Phoenicians, who later lived in Portugal. In another case from 1855, Jacob Perkins, a Melungeon man, sued someone for calling him black. He feared that such an accusation could lead to public humiliation, punishment, fines, or even slavery. In any case, these incidents show how damaging racial labels could be in a society built on strict divisions such as old America. For that reason, Melungeon families often pass down stories to explain their unique backgrounds. These oral histories were a mix of truth and survival tactics. Tales of Portuguese sailors, Turkish settlers, or even lost Israelites weren't always accurate, but they served a purpose. To her, uh, to her waist in the back, and he, he just always described that, but didn't go into detail. He just, that was it. That was like pulling teeth, uh, hen's teeth from him, try to pull this information out. In a time when being labeled black could ruin lives, these stories were a way to protect one's status. Today, DNA has confirmed that the truth lay somewhere in the middle. The Melungeons really were a mix of European, African, and Native American roots. To be fair, the Melungeons weren't the only mixed-race group in the U.S. Other communities like the Lumbees of North Carolina or the Redbones of Louisiana share similar histories. They too face confusion, suspicion, and legal battles over their identity. In fact, around 200 such communities have been identified across the eastern U.S., including the Shinnecocks in New York, the Pools in Pennsylvania, and the Buckheads in South Carolina. These groups remind us that America has always been more racially mixed than the history books like to admit. A very few people who will agree on any of the theories about their origins. Everyone has the different spin. In more contemporary time, however, the narrative is changing. For instance, since the 1990s, there's been a renewed interest in Melungeon heritage. Writers like Bill Bryson have helped bring their story to a wider audience. Some descendants have also moved away from the old Appalachian communities. Still, many proudly identify as Melungeon. They attend family reunions, share genealogical research, and even form online communities. For them, the label is no longer a source of shame. Instead, it has become a badge of survival and strength. Multimedia reporter Billy Shields caught up with members of the Melungeon Heritage Association during a recent meeting. One person's identity at one moment in history might be a different identity in a separate moment. The way you were raised and the things that you were told about your own background, how did all of that play out in your own life? And with the rise of YouTube and internet forums, myths about the Melungeons have also spread. Some claim Melungeons are prone to rare diseases like sarcoidosis or have unusual features like a unique head bump or extra fingers. Others make wild claims about Turkish or Jewish ancestry without evidence. While some of these claims sound fascinating, medical experts and historians warn that they more often than not lack scientific proof. This same approach is more practical, especially when dealing with communities whose histories have already been distorted for so long. It's interesting how the Melungeon story came to a head. In the 1990s and 2000s, DNA studies led by researchers like N. Brent Kennedy and Kevin Jones, helped to uncover the Melungeon's genetic roots. Kennedy, who identified as Melungeon himself, published a book titled The Melungeons, The Resurrection of a Proud People, and helped launch the Melungeon Research Committee. These results confirmed a mixed heritage, but they also sparked debate about what being Melungeon truly means. Besides the science, the Melungeon story is about more than just DNA. Identity is apparently complex, and history oftentimes leaves out the voices of those who didn't fit into a clear category. But today, Melungeon descendants are reclaiming their history and setting the record straight. If you enjoyed our exploration of the Melungeon story, then hit the like button. 
and stay updated on more racial DNA stories or ancient historical lineages. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.